Let's just move on. Just gone ten past seven. And for a lot of us, family is everything, isn't it? And when your kids have their own kids, I think the joy begins again. That's what everyone says, isn't it? So imagine no longer getting to see your grandchildren. It might be as a result of a relationship breakdown, a family rift, whatever. Um, I've been speaking to some people for whom this is a reality. And we'll hear from some of those on the programme today. One of them, Marion Turner from Northampton doesn't see hers. A breakdown in the relationship between my son and his then wife. Uh, he, she was very controlling, but once she was off the scene, because they're not together anymore, it did make life um, a little bit easier. Uh, this all started when, uh, obviously, when my grandson was very first born. Went on for about a year, but I couldn't stand the hostility and the control. So it was my decision to walk away which wasn't an easy one, but I found that easier to cope with than the hostility that went along with um, everything that uh, she used to do. So then I was trying to find someone to talk to about my situation because you can only talk to friends and family so much. So I thought I would see if there was a support group and there wasn't one. So I started my own. Wow, because I think most people at that point think, oh, well, you know, that's life, I'll move on. But you actually did something about it. It's desperate measures, I think. Yeah, you either just have to go on with pain, because it's a bit like a living bereavement. You don't get to see your grandchild, but it also goes along that you don't go to see your son either. So um, the whole family thing just breaks up, really. So where are you at now then? I'm at a stage now um, which has taken me over five years to get there. I mean, I'm still not 100%, but I had to build my bond back up with my son first because I didn't really like him very much, even though, it, bless him, it wasn't his fault. Um, I think he just sort of kind of went along with what was going on. So once I'd built my bond, which took me about two and a half years, believe it or not, I then was in a good place to try and build a bond with my grandson because just being a year old when I walked away, I didn't know anything about him. He didn't know me. So that was hard. I had to do, really do baby steps, just meet him maybe for like an hour with my son. Uh, and he's got two half sisters, so it does make it all very bit complicated. But we are getting there, and I think he knows who I am now, but I think he still struggles to call me grandma. Mm. And I think a lot of people listening to this will um, will, will empathise with you because, you know, marriages do break down yeah. and often children are affected by it. And I think grandparents often have kind of n not given the thought that they, you know, they perhaps should be because they do play a key part in people's lives, don't they? Absolutely. I think when marriages break down and the obviously the mother always has the children, they tend to always stay in contact, obviously, with their side of the family. But in many cases, unfortunately, the father's side um, gets alienated. So you want grandparents to have a little bit more say. You're going down to Westminster to take this. So obviously yes. there is a, um, you know, a lot of people feel this. Yes, I mean, we've got um, several solicitors that come along and support us. And what they do is they'll come along and give free advice, especially to those that have to go to court, because a lot of people do have to go to court to get access. And we've got two MPs that come and support us as well. They're just trying to amend um, the laws. They will never change them completely, I don't think, but they're just trying to amend them to make it slightly easier, because if you do have to go down the court route, it's very lengthy, very costly and sometimes you don't come out of it with anything you can spend up to twelve thousand pound and very stressful it's a stressful situation for any grandparent you shouldn't really have to be in i'm not saying you earn the right to be a grandparent but when you have children that's kind of the thing you're always looking forward to isn't it you know you want to be a grandparent and then all of a sudden that joy is just taken away from you very sad. Uh, Marion Turner from Northampton then, and she runs this support group called Grandpart in Northampton, um, which is pushing for a change in the law because as it stands, grandparents' rights don't include an automatic right to see their grandchildren. In an hour, we'll um, hear from a couple who also attend her group 
they have a story of their own. They have very limited access to their grandchildren. But if this is something that has affected you, then by all means, do get in touch. They're not allowed to visit our home. We're not allowed to visit their home. We're not even allowed to put them in our car and drive them somewhere for a meal or anything. We have to play out the whole thing in a public venue once a month uh, for three hours. It's quite challenging, especially in the winter months yeah. when it's snowing and raining and poor, you know, you've just got to find somewhere. To and I, sp- I suppose as they get older, that will be more challenging, uh, won't it? You know, yeah, young absolutely. children are pretty yeah. are pretty easy to, yes. um, to amuse yeah. in the yeah. same place for yeah. three yes. hours. Exactly, yeah. Then we have to, uh, and then we always try to feed them to give them... Um, and, and spoil them a bit. Yes. yes. And, but that's the grandparents' would. prerogative, well, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, yeah. you, you would do that if you saw them most days, but when you're only seeing yeah. them for three hours a month, that's... Yeah. Um, and remember, we used to see them for 36 hours a month, and now we see them for 36 hours a year gosh. under controlled situation. And you see the bond is it's never going to be quite the same because we don't know what's happening at school with them. We don't know who their friends are anymore. We don't know what toys they've got. We do know their interests because we ask them. Um, we, When it comes to birthdays and Christmas, we have no idea what to buy them because we don't know what they have. And we have to be very careful that our sessions don't become a question and answer session because there's so much you want to ask them, but you can't just bombard children with questions the whole time they you know we want to have fun together really yes. which we do and what do they know about the situation do they do they think it's odd that they only see granny and granddad or whatever oh, yes. you are called to yes. them do they think it's odd that they only see yes. you for this three hours a month? i don't think yeah. they can really understand the youngest one is six the older one is nine and a half understands a lot more very emotionally mature and i think knows that things are not right at yeah. all but we try not to discuss any of that because you you can't impose all this on young because children. you know it's going to go round and round and circulate you know back to the parents so mm. we try we try not to discuss it how unbelievably sad mm. terribly sad yeah. we are heartbroken absolutely heartbroken um we can't tell you we're still fighting we're still always going to fight for the rights of our grandchildren we won't give up so what next for you then? I mean, is there a way out? Do you think there is a way that you might be able to see them more often? What What do you see as the future? Well, we're not we're not very optimistic about our daughter changing her mind because she obviously isn't interested in a reconciliation. But we are hopeful that we can continue with our access visits. Uh, and keep in contact with the children until they may be hopefully old enough to make a few of their own decisions.